All right, guys, welcome to beautiful Las Vegas. I am joined by guys that have fought John Jones. This is John Jones Returns, the round table. We're joined by UFC Hall of Famer Rashad Evans. We're joined by Anthony Smith. We are joined by Dominic Reyes. Guys, I will say one thing. We're all up here for a reason. We all share something in common. We all fought John Jones. Unfortunately, we all got our butt kicked by John Jones. <laughs> we all lost to John Jones. We all lost to John Jones. So they figured, hey, let's get these guys up here to talk about John Jones. Guys, thank you guys for joining us. We appreciate you taking time to sit up here and have a discussion. No problem, man. Yeah. Rashad, you know, every superhero movie has a backstory. You could have put an end to John Jones in the early days at Jackson. <laughs> You're the backstory. You were first. You and John Jones fought way back in Atlanta, back in the day. It had the storyline, the teammate versus the teammate. It was bad blood. It was one of his biggest selling pay-per-views. When you think back to that, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you think back to your interactions with Jones as teammates, but then also as his opponent? You know, uh, I just think about how emotionally tough that whole fight was because going into that camp, it was tough for me. That was my first time really being away from uh, Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn and everything that I've, you know, known in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And then, you know, I was exiled and now I was on the outside looking in. And, you know, it, it felt, you know, because at the time, you know, before it all happened, we were like a family, you know, like, yeah. you know, and, and, and I didn't anticipate the coach's ambition, right? You know, I had my own ambition of where I want to be world champion, all this stuff, but I didn't anticipate the coach's ambition to really want to have a full stable of fighters. And, you yes, know, yes. And, and, and for them, it wasn't about, you know, keeping fighters away at, at some point. You know, when John said that he wanted to fight me, it was just kind of like... They picked. They picked who they wanted. And, and, that, and that's, that was a heartful part for me. So when I had to you know, go through that whole experience of training camp and, you know, give the sound bites and talk about, you know, what happened. It was, it was therapy, man. It was yeah. tough, man, because I'm like, you know, these guys are like my brothers, you know, like I was, you know, sleeping in Greg's house and, you know, I would, you know, uh, play with his kids. You know, I was, I was in his family and then they were just like, you know, you're out. This is the new guy. So it, it was a difficult process for me. But, you know, looking back to the days when we were training together and things like that, I, I enjoyed training with John Jones. John Jones was one of those guys who was very creative in training. He was one of those guys, after you got done from training with, you would sit there like another hour or so after training, just playing around, doing different things, and just having fun with each other. But on the, on the lines of, of learning how to fight better, you know? And he, yeah. was, he was very fun for that, because at that point in my life, I needed somebody like John Jones, because John was so creative, and I needed that. You know, for me, when I fought Jones the first time, we had a lot of bad interactions, right? I mean. Hell, the lobby of this place here, him and I got into a massive fight. We're throwing shoes. We're acting like idiots. I, I never could imagine that after hearing some of the language I used on ESPN, <laughs> that they would hire me to work for ESPN. Because, dude, it was, it was bad. I mean, you see the video right here, right? John and I come face to face. We start to fight. Uh, and it just, honestly, it all built from there. But these were my interactions with Jones. They were, they were a bit bad from the very start. But then when we got into the octagon, when we got into the octagon, that is where he earned respect for me. Because for all the bad blood, I have never in my life said or discredited John Jones the athlete. He's always been a very good athlete. And regardless of what the records say, I'm a guy that's honest, I'm a competitor. Do one, two fights over me. So when people question his ability, Hey, I was a bad boy. I was sitting up here and tell you I was a bad, bad boy. And if that dude could beat me twice, it tells you the greatness of John Jones as he's on the verge of his return. You know, we had some very fun exchanges. Very, it was some very difficult fights. And one of the, the biggest issues for me was the size difference. He was so tall that he almost seemed to lean over the top of me when we got to the clinch, and that made it very difficult. But the one guy that... The next two guys could actually match him physically, his stature, his height. And Anthony, you were the first guy that when we saw him in there with you, you were as tall as him, you were as big as him. And just this week, you said something. You said Cyril's not enjoying this because Jones plays by his own rules, right? He shows up late. He changes schedules. He does whatever he wants, and everybody around him kind of adjusts. Did you feel that whenever you were in the fight week with John Jones and what do you take from your experience? 
Yeah, you know, when I came into the fight week with John Jones, I'd only had two main events total going into my fight with John. I fought Rashad, and then I had the short notice fight with Shogun, then Ozdemir. But they weren't like big blockbuster events, so I didn't really understand what I was getting myself into. I just thought we'd show up. It'd be cool. There'd be some posters on some casinos with my face on them, and that would be cool. No, um, and it, it, was, it was much bigger than that. And I wasn't exactly prepared for what I was getting myself into. And, and that's why I was talking about Cyril. He, he's been in some big moments, but never with a guy like John. What, the second John wants to mess with you, he will. And I think that he's earned the right to be able to do that. But if you're prepared for it, I think it's different. I'm not you. So you, I gotta, you're used I gotta, to these big moments. I got to see some. What? This is just me. I got to ask, man. Because I was upstairs with Rashad Evans. And Rashad Evans was telling me Anthony Smith had an opportunity to kind of stay down, right? You took the bad knee, and uh, Rashad was like, man, I would have, you know, I would have, Rashad said that. Rashad. I'm just saying Rashad, Rashad said that. Rashad said, I would have stayed down. I would have took the belt, come back, got pay-per-view points. When you look back on that, man, after seeing what Al Jermaine Sterling went through, right, because Al Joe took the time to get better, he came back and he won the rematch. Do you ever think back to that and think, man, all the pats on the back, I would have had more zeros in the bank account if I did stay down? No, to be honest, I think I'm, I, if we're just talking simply monetary-wise, I think I'm going to make more money in the long run because I have the respect of my, of my peers and everyone around me. I don't think I'd be sitting here working for ESPN. <laughs> <laughs> and and what you was the F. F was, <laughs> I just don't. And I, I didn't, I, I'm sick. I didn't want to I'm on the it. ground, son. <laughs> would, you have, would you have felt like the real champion, though, walking out of that octagon? When I was getting pay-per-view points in the run back, I'm walking out with so much money. I'm good. Yeah, but, but, but just look back at it. Like, what if I wouldn't have beat him in the rematch? I would have never been able to, to, to pretend that I was the champion. No one would have ever called me a champion. I mean, you dealt well, with it a little if, bit when they gave you became, the belt when back. came Al Jermaine Sterling, who won the rematch. But what if I didn't? I also never thought about that either, though. It was really, when I was down, the, the reason I am the way I am to this day and where I've made it is not because I'm better than everyone else or that I'm really good. I just won't quit. So, like, yeah, yeah, in yeah. order to stay down, I would have had to have said to the referee, I can't do it. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah. can't. I, I can't do it. If he'd have had a shotgun pointed in my face, I'd have got right back up and, and still tried. I just I can't say it out loud. Well, you got up and you fought and you won, but you didn't win because you didn't <laughs> stay on the ground. But there's another guy that many thought won the fight, Dominic Reyes, right? Guys, who thought Dominic Reyes beat John Jones? So many. So many thought that you won the fight. So, Dom, when you look back on it, when you think back to that fight three years ago, mm -hmm. you still feel you got it done? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I got it done that night. I mean, when you're in the fight with someone, you know, you know what happens. You know, whether it's sparring, training, you know who got the best of each other in the exchanges. And I went out there and I took it to him, man. I mean, for me, that was such an amazing experience. I got to touch, you know, my potential. And I got to just touch it and see what, I, what I'm capable of. And it was an amazing night. Um, I outstruck him. You know, I had a great time. Yeah. I had a great time out there. It was the time of my life. Um, yeah, I, I want to do it again. <laughs> you know, watch, when you look at that, Dominic, and so many people thought that you got it done. And so many people thought it to the point. It was so tough that he went away for a while. Mm -hmm. But I got to ask you, too, this question. When you see John Jones this week, and he says that the motivation wasn't there at the end of his light heavyweight run, and it was against you two. Do you take a bit of offense to that? Because it's easy to get motivated for Evs, right? Because it's the yeah. teammate. It's easy to get motivated for me because we're the rivals. But he's saying when he was getting ready for you two, the motivation wasn't there. Do you feel a little bit like taken aback by it? Does it, is it? It's a bit of an insult. Yeah, it's definitely a bit of an insult, but that's just John doing the John thing where he's twisting things to make himself a hero. Um, yeah, I was extremely motivated for that fight. If you're not motivated for a fight, what are you doing, especially a championship fight? To say championship fights aren't motivating is kind of ridiculous, but he is John Jones, so that's how he rolls. Um, overall, though, I was, I guess he could, it, it, there is kind of a truth to it in a sense where I, when I started training, I started training for John. You know, before I fought anybody, before I worked my way up the tower, it started with John. And I was always in the back of my head thinking about fighting John. You know what I mean? And then I reached the top of the tower and did my thing. Um, so everybody's life's different. Everybody's moments culminate differently. And uh, for that fight, I mean, I was, that was my moment. And for him, he's trying to say that oh, it was just an afterthought. Well, that's definitely disrespectful, but it is what it is. I, I mean, listen, I'm going to keep it real with you guys. I, it hurt my feelings when he said that. 
but I don't think he's wrong. I, I, I really don't. Like, uh, when you're used to fighting guys like Rashad and Shogun and DC and Rampage and Machida and then Anthony Smith, like, those are, like, in his mind, in that, in that generation of people, I was in a different era to him. So it, I, I definitely felt it in the fight, too, because he didn't come at me when we fought. It, it was, let's neutralize, let's keep him away, and I'm just going to stay ahead. He didn't, he wasn't trying to finish me. He wasn't trying to attack me. And, and that's how I looked at it. Maybe he was, but I didn't feel like he was he didn't opening. feel the threat. He wasn't opening up enough for me to even feel like I could. Like, that was, my entire game plan was to wait for some of the crazy uh, diversified attacks and him to be creative and then try to jump in some of those holes and create some chaos. He didn't really do that. He, he, he didn't really feel that I was such a threat. So he, he just neutralized me, kept me on the outside, and, and I was kind of stuck out there. So I, I do feel like I don't think he respected me enough as an opponent to be motivated. Wow. I feel like life was kind of catching up with him at that point, and, he, and, and fighting stopped being that thing that it was for him. You know, because before when John was, you know, young in the game, he was eager. Like, he was uber learning about everything. Like, he would do everything he can to learn about a new technique, you know, and always trying to travel to new places to get that work in. But as life started to catch up with him, you know, he, he stopped doing those kind of things. And you can see the creativity kind of go down as the fights progress because, you didn't see him coming with anything besides that that, that spinning back elbow that everybody yeah, yeah, knew yeah. that was coming. You know, he, he stopped being that creative person that he was, and he stopped taking the risk that he did, and he started to fight a little bit more uh, more patient, a little bit yeah. more. Which um, makes him harder to fight. It, it makes him harder to fight, but to at, fight. The at the same time, it makes him less dangerous. Yeah, yeah, less dangerous. I think he started fighting not to lose as opposed to win. Mm -hmm. I think he started... Um, yep not wanting to lose fights. It was about not losing fights and losing his legacy, you know? You know, for me, it was it was his long-range weapons is what was difficult for me, because I'm shorter. I'm shorter than all you guys, oh, right? So for me, still. it was all <laughs> pressure, 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 getting an opponent's face and making it work the entire time. And with Jones, it was like those long-range weapons, right? It was the kick up the middle. It was all the knees. I took so many knees closing the distance, trying to get close to him and infight him. But... When I look at him in the fights with you guys, you last two guys, you two, Evs, I, I remember being in the arena in Atlanta yeah. watching you fight, and it was always knees up the middle because you and I are kind of the same type of fighting style. With you guys, there was a bit of a, a calmness in the fight, and I think that ultimately played a part in why they were so close. But when you guys look at him, what separates him from the other guys, what makes him so difficult? And this ain't for anybody. It's for all three of you. What makes him so difficult to fight, Rashad? It's that range, man. For, for me, it's that range that you spoke about. You know, his ability to stay so long and still be able to touch you. You know, he was able to stay really long and still be able to touch me. And I would feel the pressure, feel him on my hands and feel like, okay, I got to go because he's touching me. But also what he was doing, he was kind of desensitizing me too. By touching my hand, by touching my hand, desizing, desensitizing me being in, my, being in my area. And then once I'll try to go, there was a big gap. And then it would leave a lot of room for him to counter. So the, 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 the space that he had with his range in his hands, just using his hands, was one thing. But you did a really good job by climbing the body yep, when, yep, you, yep. when you fought him. And I wish I would have did that. But you took notes from, when, from watching me get smacked up. I mean, you really didn't get smacked up. <laughs> <laughs> y'all be tripping, man. I don't know what's wrong with y'all, man. Go ahead, Anthony. Uh, you know, I, I had a hard time with the resets. He, ne he never let me. I felt like he would oblique kick me, and I would kind of circle out. I'd kind of L-step out, and then as soon as I started to work my way back into range, it'd be that front kick to the body, back to the oblique kick, throw a jab. And, and, and none of it was, like, super damaging. It, uh, the front kick started to suck for after a while. Uh, but every time I would reset, he'd hit me with something else. And then I'd reset, and he'd have something else at me. It was the constant making me adjust. I, I, I couldn't get my own game going because he did such a good job of constantly giving me something to deal with all the time. I spent my entire training camp worried about this 85-inch reach. I got to worry about the reach of his hands. And we kind of glossed over the lower half of it, thinking, oh, I, I, I do an okay job of dealing with kicks. Let's worry about his reach of his hands. His punching reach is zero issues. I had no issues with that at all. And he doesn't hit that hard with the hands. It doesn't. So it was waist down was the problem. So all the stuff that I kind of ignored thinking I'd be okay was the stuff that was a huge problem. It was Lower body was a huge problem for me. And I, uh, I learned off all you guys. Um, his reach was a problem, but I figured out how to nullify it by moving in with my athleticism off angle. 
um, the kicks, I was, I knew they were coming. I knew they were coming. So I would rotate my hips right at, right when he would kick to give him a, a small surface to kick onto. I had a numb um, spot in my belly for like two years. I got <laughs> killed the nerves, and when they started to grow back, it would burn. So oh, that's so sucks. many times in the body. Um, body kick. But I think uh, my biggest uh, thing I had to overcome with him was his defense. You know, mm -hmm. he's uh, made really, really good defense. He's good at not getting hit with the devastating shots. Mm -hmm. um, I hit him plenty of times, you know, pretty hard as well. But he was just barely out of it's just his arms barely. Like yeah, like he, his he, arms he feels. Yeah. They're like antennas, those arms. Yeah, yeah he's you, like a feeler never, with them. Yeah, right. you never get a clean shot on him because he always use his arms and he points his arms. He'll poke almost, you in the eye if you ask. Almost, you. almost, <laughs> almost like. Uh, <laughs> Almost hey, like man. a Heisman pose type thing, you know, because w what he's doing is he's, he's blinding your face, right? He's going here, he's blinding your face so you can't see, and then you try to get your head around right. it. Well, then you and go then forearm to the elbows a lot because oh, he'll man. be here, mm -hmm. and then yeah. he'll go out on something that's round, and then he'll, it's, it's it, defensively, he he's good, man. He's well, he good. turns. He'll literally turn, turn away and run. from the punch. <laughs> he'll, turn right? and run. he'll turn away from the punch whenever you feel like you're starting to get to him. One of the things that I was able to land on him a lot was the uppercut up the middle. Right, I would throw something over the top big, and he tended to put his head down. Mm -hmm. So then I would throw the uppercut yep. up the middle. But, but one thing I That's think nice. people forget about Jones is he's tough because I hit him with some big shots, and he took those big shots, and he continued to press and continued to fight. So it's not just his abilities, right? He does have a really strong mind oh, yeah. for fighting because in those tough moments, John Jones is really not running away from the fight. He's kind of going to it, and that is... That is ultimately what makes him so difficult to deal with inside the octagon. But now, that size advantage, right, is going to be null and void as he goes to heavyweight, especially against this guy. Cyril Gunn is huge. Yeah. And he's fighting Jones this weekend, and they just ran the graphic of John Jones the heavyweight. When you look at John Jones the heavyweight, the visual that they're going to pop up on the TV again, what do you think, Rashad Evans? Because for three years we heard... John Jones was a way to bulk up and put on muscle. But when I look at him, to me, it feels like he gained weight. It doesn't feel like it's as great a weight as I, as I kind of expected after three years of, of him lifting and putting on muscle. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit softer than, than I imagined. I'm going to be honest. It's a little bit softer than I imagined. But one thing that's kind of keeping me thinking that he's still kind of fast is the fact that his legs are still, still tiny. tiny. Huh? And, and, and he's still able to move, you know. So he still probably has good legs, a good balance. But, you know, up top, he just looks he looks really hefty, you know. He doesn't look as if, like, he's been... Uh, power lifting. No, nah, yeah. power lifting too much, but not enough reps, right? Not enough to get that beach muscle. Not enough to kind of really show the cuts that he probably should have at this point. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, his body is it's a heavyweight body now, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, who, ah, man, it's so hard to say. It's been three years. He completely transformed his body, completely transformed his body. And but, the fight IQ is still there, right? He's still I mean, doesn't look, it, 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 he doesn't look that different to me. It still it's looks just heavier. like John Jones, just heavier. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I've been trying to not be too critical of, of how he it looks. It don't I, matter. I, I expected him to be a little more shredded and ripped and see some abs. I expected that. So I was a little bit shocked. But I, I'm trying not to be too critical because there's been times like the Devin Clark fight, for example. I yeah. came in looking a little soft, and not a, a little soft around the midsection, but I was still strong, fast. My conditioning was there. Sometimes just the way that you feel yourself and, and just wherever you're at in life, mm. sometimes you're a little softer than you than typical. And, and he's, you know, he's already made some comments saying, you know, it's not, not a bodybuilding competition. I still feel good. I think his performance will show if that's going to be a difference. But I was shocked to see him but a little softer. But I, I'm trying not to be too critical. Can I ask you the question, though? Is he, is he a bit sensitive? About the look, because it seemed like he was. Oh, for sure. It, it seemed like he was yeah. answering. Before the question. Right. Before, <laughs> the moment that he had to take his shirt off, because if you watch the countdown, right, as I'm getting ready to call the fight this weekend, I don't think I ever saw him with his shirt off. Yeah. So the moment he had to take it off, he was like ready to start explaining his look. Do you think that he's a bit sensitive or maybe he didn't get the gains that he was expecting? Yeah, I think I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's a little bit of both. I think, you know, he took so much time away and people anticipated him coming back, you know, for that time. But that's not his fault. That's our expectation, right? 100 percent, 100 percent. But I think also a part of it was his expectation, too. I think a part of it, mm. you know, he probably expected himself to be a little bit more this and a little bit more that. But it, it is what it is. And, and I think that, you know, despite the way that he looks, he looks like a heavyweight, but 
he's probably going to still be the same, the same IQ wise, you know. I think he's probably a little bit sensitive about it. A little bit. Because as I know how I felt on times where I, I've been out for a while, I'm battling an injury, I come back, I'm still in great shape, but I haven't been able to shake whatever I added when I was injured those 10 or 11 months. Yeah. I can imagine if it was three years. I'm sure yeah, it's yeah, going to sure. take more time to, to, to get rid of some of that. So He said next I, fight he wants to lose another 15 pounds and fight at heavyweight. He said going into the next one, he'd like to still be at heavyweight, but be more in it. He said he weighs 250 now. He said he'll be in the 235 range. And it'll probably look a little more similar to what people and, expected, right? And I and I like that better for him. I like him better at 235. When I heard him, he went all the way up to 250. It kind of worried me a little bit because I feel like at 235 he could be just as devastating, if not more, at 235 because he'll be bringing a lot of attributes that he would have had at light heavyweight. And now at 250, I'm not sure how many attributes he's going to bring Bree over because now he, he may get tired. He may gas yeah, yeah, out yeah. like a heavyweight. Rashad, now, he said I, I, that I he now has the KO power. He said now he has, he has power now. one punch power. I mean, you put on 30 pounds, you're going to feel like you have KO power, but when you're hitting a guy that, that weight at the same time, I mean, that KO power is kind of nullified. Um, man, it's so hard to say. I can't wait to see this fight. They're, they're, John has so many questions to answer for himself. Like, he doesn't even know what's going to happen. He's sitting in his hotel right now watching us. Yeah. Like, man, these guys might be right on some of these things. I, I wouldn't be shocked if John Jones was 235 when he fought me. To be honest with you, I was shocked at how big he was from weighing day. Big. He, yeah, he gains a lot of weight from weighing day. I bet to he's no, I bet he's about two twenty two, two twenty five. Yeah, I, I, I bet this is two twenty five. I bet this isn't the first time John Jones has seen two fifty though either. It's just no. well, he would look a little bigger in the off season, but not would, this yeah. big. Yeah, but I bet he's been north of two forty before. So because he's he was a monster two hundred five. You look at a guy like Rackage, that dude's two fifty right now. I would get down from two sixty sometimes. That's what I'm saying. Wow. Like Rampage was two sixty five. Like it's crazy. Those bro. guys get huge. That's I almost way. died. That's way. Right. <laughs> Dude, I, <did. laughs> I almost died. Son. Dom, how much? You, how much do you weigh? I weigh two twenty five right now. Yeah, me too. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm going to tell people. So all the guys from AK, me and Habib, we're just weight bullies. Losing 50 pounds. I <laughs> <laughs> dude smaller than us. Twenty five pounds. That's the way to go, man. But. What is John Jones, like, outside of the weight, how has he evolved over from the guy that was not only a great fighter but a superhero? Mm -hmm. Remember all those crimes he stopped oh back my in the gosh. day? Oh, my goodness. You, you, you would have had, you would had to think he was setting him up how many he was stopping. <laughs> he stopped setting <laughs> crimes. He went from stopping crimes on the morning of the fight to winning the fight. Yeah. How has John Jones evolved as the athlete? Because we've seen it the whole time, right? You said you started fighting, training for Jones. Yep. You trained with him to start. I saw him in his heyday. How, what, is, what has changed in John Jones, Dom? Uh, over time, I think it's just his athleticism has kind of waned a little bit over time. Um, he's not as explosive as he used to be. He's not as hungry to finish people as he used to be. You know, that, that wanting to win as opposed to not wanting to lose. Yeah, you know, he's definitely had some changes over time. I think when he was younger, when he first came into the UFC, I don't think he just didn't know what he didn't know. So he was it, free, too. He was, he like, was so free. Yeah. He had no fear. There. He had no fear. And so he, he was creative. He just did crazy stuff. He was all over the place. And then that, that evolved into him just getting better as he spent more time at Jackson's. He added some skills. Uh, I, think, uh, I think Wink really, like, steered into his creativity and added He's not coaching him anymore. Well, no, like, but I mean, I'm talking as, as he was evolving. I yeah, think as he was evolving, yes, absolutely. He started being more dangerous and creative. And then once you get a little bit older and you start making those huge checks and your legacy starts being talked about, I think you start to play it a little safer. And listen, he's been in, he's 15 years into his career. But this dude 20-something like, fights. That's, most of those are title fights. That's a lot of miles. Yeah. He's had like 16 UFC title fights. Yeah, that's so a lot of miles. Really judge, it's hard to really judge him in terms of maybe he's coming back when even though he may be coming back, he still won, right, right Rashad? Right. So it's hard to really be like, well, this guy's like kind of not doing these things. But even in, if he's fighting a bit safer, he's still winning. Yeah, he's got more patient and he's got more cerebral. And you expect that as you get older. You know, you know more about the sport. And, and now it's just a matter of being able to match what you know with your ability to hit the mark, right? Be able to still get there. And that's the whole problem when you get older. Like, when you get older, you can't hit those marks. But John Jones, he still can. John Jones, he has a great mindset. When it comes to fighting, this guy's IQ is out of control. He's so creative in there. And he almost can see things before they happen. You know, he has a good way of steering his opponents and get, making them do what they don't want to do. He has a way of making you watch him when you don't want to watch him. And that's part of the problem. Even when you're training for him, you're like, watch out for this, watch out for that. He starts moving around doing his thing. Next thing you know, 
You're watching John Jones instead of fighting him. Yeah, for sure. For, for me, it was about, for me, when I was the champ, it was about avoiding the landmines. And I think Jones has become a master at avoiding the landmines. So if, yeah. if you have a great left kick, he understands I got to be away from the left kick. Great right hand. It was always about, especially when you're the champ and you're sleeping on satin sheets, right? You got all the money and you got all these young, hungry guys coming at you. You got to just avoid the pitfalls mm -hmm. in those championship fights. And he's been able to do that. But ultimately, we're all here for one thing. Jones is back. And we as fans of the sport are all interested in Jones being back. I feel he's got the toughest matchup. That no disrespect to any of you guys up here. This matchup for him is very difficult because I feel he has the size of you two, but bigger. Mm -hmm. Much bigger. Sure. 30 oh, yeah. pounds bigger. And quickness, agility, everything. The Cyril Gunn has just about everything. Cyril Gunn also has, which is probably going to be the most important factor in the fight, he has an ability to be okay in the slow fight. We, you and I, Rashad, when it was slow, we would rush. Like, we got to yeah. be fighting right now. Yeah. And so then Jones would take advantage of that. You guys didn't rush. So the fight stayed very close. Cyril Gunn, if you want to just trade leg kicks, he'll trade leg kicks. <laughs> he doesn't care. How do you guys see this matchup this weekend? Man, I think that uh, I, I think Cyril Gunn does what John Jones does as well as John does, he's just bigger and, and, and he's, he, he's used to moving as a heavyweight. I think you have a, a fantastic point of he's used to those slow fights and he's okay with it. I think that John is going to kind of stick to what he's been doing the later part of his career, the last couple of fights. He, he kind of he keeps it close those first three rounds and then he starts clinching and he wants to push you up against the fence. I don't see him shooting doubles and singles. Um, but I do think he's going to I think he's going to have an advantage clinching Cyril up against the cage. I think he's going to be able to push him there and slow him down. But y'all don't think he'll take more risk this weekend. Y'all don't think he'll take nah. like a little bit more nah. risk this weekend? Nah. Being away from so long. Not, not if he's smart. Like, hey, not, like if he's Roy fight, Jones. not if he's fighting you smart. You forgot about me? I'm back to show you. Yeah. Right? Like y'all yeah. don't think he he has that I got to make a statement in my return. He doesn't have enough power to back Cyril off. I feel, I feel like he's, he's not going to open up and take risk unless he feels his time. I feel like what he's going to try to do, he's, John's very systematic on how he approaches. Calculated. Fight. Very calculated, very calculated. What he's going to try to do is he's going to try to kick out the knees, kick out the knees, and back him up to the line, try to hurt him to that black line. Once you get him to that black line, he's going to either throw one or two things and get him against a cage and start his wall and brawl, wearing him on the cage and look for a trip. He's going to ultimately try to look for, get this fight on the ground. And he kind of gave a hint when, when he was talking. He said, I'm going to make this fight look easy. There's only one way that John Jones can make this fight look easy if he gets it to the ground. the ground. So we kind of tipped his hat yeah. on that. And we got to expect Cyril to be aware of that. So, you know, it's going to be a lot of lateral movement with Cyril creating new angles, and not letting John get set. If he doesn't let John get set, like Dom didn't let John get set, then it's going to be a hard night for John. I think that's the key for Cyril. Um, he has to not let John fight John's fight. Uh, anything yeah. John wants to do, he has to do the opposite like I did. Um, there's no way that he beats John at John's game. I, I, don't, I don't care who you are. It's not going to happen. You're not going to beat John at John's game, which is taking it slow. You know, the, the little leg kicks, you know, little jab here and there. You play that game with John, he's going he's gonna to pick you apart. Yeah, you know, you cannot play his game. And, but the reality is, and this is why I think Cyril Gunn is so tough, I think that he has that ability. Yeah. Cyril Gunn has that ability to be in that type of fight and still be successful. Because right. go back to the first few rounds of the Francis and Ganu fight. He was able to just get up 3-0 on Francis yeah. by just touching him. Yeah. I told him he was a pretty boy yesterday <laughs> because he looked clean. When he looks clean, dude, Derek Lewis, even Derek Lewis, he broke him down without barely hitting him hard with anything until he had nothing to do, but also showed he's a dog if he needs to, as we saw against Tai Tuivasa. When you look at that fight, what's the X factor? There's always an X factor, right? right. What is that word? We, all, we always use that, whether it's the weigh-in show, the post-fight show. Right, what's always. What's the X factor? Somebody tell me an X factor in this fight. In this fight, the X factor, it's, it's got to it's, it's gotta be, like, if they fight, if Cyril Gaon just fights the way he's been fighting everybody else, I do think that in, in, if the fight stays like that and John wants to play that game, I think Cyril stays just a little bit ahead of that because of his size, and I think he's, he's just used to doing that. I think he's just a little bit better than, than John there. But I think the X factor is going to be the clinch stuff. It's going to be in tight. If Cyril can defend takedowns to keep his back off the, off the fence, uh, he could definitely win this. I just don't think he's going to be able to do that. I think the X factor is uh, Cyril's mental mentality entering the fight, whether he wants to bring it to him and make it a dog fight or not. I think that's going to be the X factor in this fight.
I think it's going to be Cyril's ability to uh, stay in movement, stay in motion. I think rather he stay in motion with his feet or with his hands, I think it's going to be a problem. And I say with his hands because John Jones, defensively speaking, as we spoke about, he has his arm planted out. Now, when you use a gross motor movement to kind of use defense, you can go around it, right? Because you're usually trying to block something. So as Dom did, when you, when you fought John Jones, you were able to go underneath sometimes, go over, and you're able to get around that, that arm defense. So if he keeps his hands in motion with his feet in motion, it can cause some problems. And then again, with John Jones, he's got to get this fight to the ground. He gets this fight to the ground, he's going to change it. Because you look at, you look at uh, uh, Francis Ngannou, and Ngannou fought a harder fight because what he was dealing with on his feet was yep. not very pleasant. Yep. And you got to start thinking about a guy who can make Francis do that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's, that's how difficult an opponent Cyril Gunn is for anyone that he fights in the UFC. The guy's a phenomenal fighter. But John Jones is John Jones. Look, nobody knows Jones better than these men up here. I thank you guys for joining us. Appreciate your insights into John Jones and who he is, your ability to break him down as the fighter, as the man, and everything else. Guys, we thank the guys for joining us. Don't forget why we're here, though. We're here for UFC 285. Early prelims start at 5.30 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. The prelims start at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN+. Plus. And the main card starts at 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN+. PN Plus pay-per-view. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a fantastic fight night. John Jones is back. Hit that buy button. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. So